In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, let's look at the True Bible Study translation from the Greek text to Papyri. Now, on the right-hand side of my screen, I'm showing the King James Version. Let's go ahead and read the True Bible Study translation. Verse 4, For there is one body and one spirit, according as also you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one belief, one baptism, one God and Father of all holy people, the one being upon all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, the grace was given according to the measure of the free gift of Christ. The truth is that there is one body, one spiritual body of Christ, of which all holy people are true Christians, are limbs or members. And there is one spirit, one holy spirit life, which is the spirit of Christ in all of us, holy people, Christians. According as also you are called, just as you, we, Christians, have already been invited to. We were called, how? In one hope of our, our calling. The hope is what God gives us to expect to come to pass in the future. So our calling is within the sphere of action of one hope pertaining to the invitation issued to you and which you accepted. All Christians have accepted our calling. Otherwise, we wouldn't be a Christian. So refer to Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, or Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, and chapter 2, verse 7. And there is one Lord, one Master, who is the resurrected Christ Jesus. This word emphasizes and confirms the validity and authenticity of Christ's Lordship, including his dominion and authority. That's whom we are referring to in the New Covenant. One Lord, one Master, who is the resurrected Christ Jesus. There is one belief, one faith, or trust. The word belief is the same word that's sometimes translated as faith. Belief is the information that God makes known to have confidence in, with assured certainty and surety. What belief? It's belief regarding Christ Jesus our Lord. And there is one baptism, one baptism for God's people today, which is to be immersed or surrounded within Holy Spirit. It is spiritual water. In all holy people, Christians, have been washed clean permanently in Holy Spirit life. There is one God and Father of all holy people, only one. There is one God who is also the Father of all Christians. Because we have received the gift of Christ in us, and God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Specifically, God our Father is the one who is presently and actively continuing to be upon all. He's on, upon, over higher up than all holy people, Christians, including the Lord Jesus Christ. Not that God controls all, but he is above it all. His authority is superior, and he will continue according to what he says, no matter what others may do to try to stop him. And he is through all, through all holy people, Christians, including the Lord Jesus Christ. God works by means or by way of all of his sons to reach the accomplishment of his intention. And God is in all, within all holy people, Christians, including the Lord Jesus Christ, because we all have the same Holy Spirit life. But to each one of us, and by using the word each instead of all, Paul emphasizes each holy person, each Christian individually, particularly, singly, distinctly. None of us is omitted. Not one of us has been missed. To each one of us, the grace was given. Unmerited or undeserved favor has already been given to each one of us. 
how according to in accordance with in conformity and proportion to and with the measure of the standard of content is the free gift of christ the gift that is freely given which is the christ the word translated free gift emphasizes the fact that the gift is freely given even though the actual gift is a valuable quality item each one of us has received the present or gift of holy spirit which is the spirit of christ in us god has not kept the resurrected christ to himself and all that christ makes available without allowing people to share and partake of this grace god is carrying out and fulfilling his promise which he first spoke in genesis 3:15 regarding the Christ for redemption and salvation. All holy people, true Christians, have received the same gift of Holy Spirit, which is a free gift to us. This gift does not change, and nobody has more or less Holy Spirit life. The gift of Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ in us. It is the deposit, token, earnest, of what we will receive at a future time. The full completeness for us will come to pass when our Lord Jesus Christ will come to gather all holy people, Christians, together with him, giving us new spiritual bodies, the life of which will be Holy Spirit life, just like the body he has already received from God his Father when God raised him up alive from among the dead people. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Again, we'll read the True Bible Study Translation. For us, there is one God, the Father from whom are all things, and we are into him. And there is one Lord Jesus Christ, by means of whom are all things, and we are by means of him. The truth for, with, or to us, holy people, Christians, is that there is one God, only one. There is one God who is the Father. He's the father of whom? All holy people, true Christians, and of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's from God, our Father, whom are all things. He is the source from whom all things exist and proceed to and for us. And we are into him, or we exist and proceed with a view to, directed to or for him. And there is one Lord Jesus Christ, only one. There is one Jesus who is both Lord and Christ, by means of whom are all things. It is through him that all things are available to us from God our Father. And we are by means of him. We exist, being holy people, Christians, through him, through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who made it possible because he carried out God's will by sacrificing himself in order to make redemption and salvation available to and for us. Now let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator of God and men, man Christ Jesus. There is one God, singular one God, no other. He's not divided up into three parts. There is one God and one mediator of God and men. And a mediator is a go-between, one who goes in the middle between two parties, one who mediates for peace and unity between differing parties. There is a singular mediator relative to God and mankind. Who is the mediator? Man Christ Jesus, the man Jesus who has been resurrected, who is the Christ the anointed one.